Given the state of the Catholic Church, it's not just the Arian Crisis 2.0 with modernism. 98% of the Church has a Neo-Protestant liturgy, the receiving communion on the hand. The Catholic Church has watered down, changed, or reversed nearly all of their traditional teachings. The death penalty, cremation, collegiality, ecumenism, advocating for a secular state and religious liberty, interfaith gatherings which directly contradict mortilio animos. And now, this new focus on human fraternity and dialogue, and they're even building an Abrahamic faith center, getting rid of fasting rules. So you have a modernist liturgy, you have a modernist ecumenical council, and all of these changes were solidified because the Pope who opened the council, John the Twenty-Third, is a Catholic saint. The Pope who promulgated and approved that council, Paul the Sixth, is a Catholic saint. And the Pope who lived out the spirit of that council, the spirit of Vatican II, John Paul II, is a Catholic saint. So you also have modernist saints. Unless the true church can now err on the canonization of saints, either way the Catholic Church has erred significantly on faith and morals. And the current Pope Francis has said, with certainty and with magisterial authority, the liturgical reforms are irreversible. And he's made this clear with Traditionist Custodis in September and with even more restrictions in December. The TLM is getting phased out. He's also said you either accept Vatican II and you're with the church or you're not. So if the Roman Catholic Church doesn't even care about its own ancient liturgy, doesn't care about continuity or its own traditional teachings, why would any person trust this church with their soul? And in all this, isn't the East, aren't the Orthodox vindicated? I mean, the Catholic Church already says they have valid sacraments, they have apostolic secession, they have a reverent liturgy. At the Council of Florence, they never brought up divorce and remarriage. If the East teaches any theological error, well, the Uniates, the Eastern Catholics, like the Melkites, literally teach and do all the same things. They don't even recite the Filioque. Many of them want it removed. Pope Benedict would have agreed with me. We eventually need the Filioque taken out of the Roman Creed. They have the same teachings, the same theology, the same liturgy, they even have the same saints. For example, on the second Sunday of Great Lent, they have an entire service dedicated towards a pillar of orthodoxy, St. Gregory of Palamas, who died out of communion with Rome 400 years after the Great Schism, and was made a pillar of orthodoxy, was made a saint because of how anti-papal, anti-Thomistic, and anti-filioque he was. The Roman Catholic Church considered these teachings heretical and condemned him for centuries. But if a pillar of orthodoxy, St. Gregory of Palmas, who died 400 years after the schism and was condemned in his life and died outside of communion with Rome, can now be a Catholic saint? Well, Udum Sanctum Conte Domino and all these doctrines of no salvation outside the Catholic Church, they're false. Rome has significantly erred. In the papacy, all the church fathers believed in papal primacy, but they did not believe in papal supremacy. The canons of the early council proved this, but Vatican I contradicts all of this because Vatican I claims that papal supremacy has always been known, that it was an immediate and universal jurisdiction over the entire world. But now, Catholic historians and theologians and even Ratzinger are admitting that in the first millennium of the church, the ecclesial structure, it was conciliar, it was decentralized, and it was orthodox. It wasn't the Roman Catholic system of papal monarchy that even someone like Augustine he interpreted the rock in Matthew to mean Peter's confession of faith, not the Vatican I mindset of the papacy. And if scripture really did prove the papacy, then why on the eve of the Great Schism did Pope Leo cite the donation of Constantine, a forgery? Why didn't he just cite scripture? So if you're a traditional Catholic just because you love the traditional Latin Mass, well, there's Western Rite Orthodoxy, which is growing incredibly fast because the ancient Western liturgy is beautiful and liturgy is such an important part of the church, how we worship God. And while the Vatican is doing everything in its power to destroy the ancient Western liturgy and everything Orthodox left in the Catholic Church, the ancient Western liturgy is thriving in the Orthodox Church. So traditional Catholics, why are you not Eastern Orthodox? And why would any Orthodox Christian leave their church to join a church that has a modernist liturgy, has a modernist ecumenical council, and modernist saints? It doesn't care about its own ancient liturgy, doesn't care about continuity or its own traditions, why would any person trust this church with their soul? Vatican II is not the first innovation from the Roman Catholic Church. Vatican I is a light years 
leap and it evolves and it is propped up by all these forgeries like the donation of constantine like the samantian forgeries like the pseudo decreals like the liberus pontificalis and there's so many more and even before vatican one the renaissance was full of modernism having god the father incarnate having all these naked heterodox art and ideas flourish under the papacy but even before that before the great schism rome used to use leavened bread then they switched to unleavened bread then they banned the use of leavened bread just like they used to receive the wine the blood of christ in communion now they just get the body just like they used to allow married priests and they ban married priests just to, like they allowed infants to receive communion now they deny infants receiving communion and they added to the creed the filioque even though prior ecumenical councils specifically forbid any changes to the creed so the evolution the problems in rome go much deeper than just vatican ii or vatican I or the renaissance even before the great schism supremacist mindset of having a single super bishop an autocrat that can be judged by no one is the same mindset is what is destroying the catholic church because when you have a heretical pope when you have a pope who is heterodox you know like pope honorius who condemned him the ecumenical council but this pope is above the council the roman catholic church excommunicated the only solution to their problem collegiality orthodoxy and the traditional catholics are now suffering because vatican one is very clear you need to follow the pope and even someone like thomas aquinas who was my confirmation saint when i became a catholic his errors of the greeks 72 percent of his citations are forged quotations from Cyril and from other church fathers to fit papal supremacy. And many of the trad Catholic concerns are nothing new. In the sources of Catholic dogma in Denzinger, it goes over the same Jansenists, the Gallicanists, the old Catholics. The traditional Catholics of today have the same critiques that they did, saying that the church could establish a bad right that is condemned. And then there's encyclicals like Caste Canubii, which say Catholics cannot depend on the false autonomy of human reason. Don't depend on your private judgment. You have no authority to judge what tradition is. You need to follow the Supreme Pontiff, who is guided by Christ. You need to follow the Pope. Are you in love with the church on paper, or are you in love with the church in reality? Because the church in reality is Francis. It is a Novus Ordo. Even if you got Pope Pius XIII, and he came in and he, done, he undid all the changes, and it's basically the 1870s again, traditional Latin mass everywhere. All that would show is it's not about continuity, it's really up to the whims of whoever is the Pope. Because next, Francis II could come in and undo all of those changes. It's really up to the whims of a single super bishop, an autocrat that can be judged by no one. Because the Pope is above tradition, he's above everything. He is the interpreter of tradition, and that's why Catholics have to follow the Pope. And the legalism and scrupulosity and black and white Talmudic mindset that is so present in the traditional Catholic world, the law was made for man, not man for the law. And this obsession with, oh, it was an ex cathedra, even though Vatican I says even ordinary magisterium needs to be believed as divinely revealed you have no authority to question the pope you need to follow even if it is ordinary magisterium because he can be just as infallible vatican one vatican two the sources of catholic dogma make it very clear there's no theosis in traditional catholicism there's no cleansing the news and the atheistic conclusion of absolute divine simplicity you're left with an unknowable watchmaker god and you only ever get to interact with created effects and the you have to have things like the beatific vision this is exactly what my new confirmation saint saint gregory of palamas was talking about is that if you go to if the west goes down this route and they deny the uncreated light the uncreated energies the essence energy distinction hesychasm it's going to lead to atheism because all you're left with is an unknowable watchmaker god orthodox are vindicated they're right and since i've become orthodox I have been fulfilled in a way that I never was in traditional Catholicism. So please just stop with the mental gymnastics, trying to make the broken system work. It doesn't work, and you're missing out on not being orthodox.